Four minutes in, four minutes to go. Okay, Bill Kenny here with ATP Science here at the Wadapalooza Festival, and uh, it's pretty exciting here. We're uh, with Zach and Jessa. Jack has competed in two events today. Uh, Jessa is prepping him for his next event, which is until a little bit later on today. So, Jessa, tell us what you're what you're working on here. Hi. So basically, I'm going to get into Zach's upper back. We're doing a little upper thoracic release. He has internal rotation of his shoulder girdle, so I like to get into the rotator cuff, rear delt, upper thoracic, give him more midline extension. Uh, we'll go in the prone position. I'll rake out his pecs, do an awful <laughs> subscapular stretch, um, and I already did a little alignment cervically, thoracically. I'll get into his feet, because as we all know, he's had reconstructive surgery there. Mm. So he's complaining of low back impingement into his hip. So little 20 minute buff, not too deep, not too drastic, so I don't want to give him any barbell fatigue. And so were there particular things you did in the weeks coming up that were uh, helping him? Because he did very well this morning, a first and a second. Uh, what was the preparation like? So I think for Zach, it's really learning to re-acquaint with pain receptors because he can push and push. And then getting in, removing adhesion allows for more mobility, muscles move, blood circulates. So we did a lot of deep release with cupping and just great blood flow. When you say that? <laughs> We're getting thumbs up from Zach. That's all good. Absolutely. I think he, I treated him uh, at least two or three times before he came. So I'm here with him. And then once we get home, he has another one scheduled in the book. So I think it's just really crucial for athletes to kind of keep ahead of the pain. You know, you don't really want to wait till you're in pain. The goal is to just keep expanding, right? So you were talking essentially leading into recovery. So, so what types of recovery, uh, what will you do different in recovery than you would do sort of lead up? Well, I think here it's just quicker. It's not as deep, you know, you know, it's just a feel base. I go off of palpation. So based on the events and how the bodies work, how they're moving, the body's going to have more tension, maybe upper or lower. I think the run was really hard. They had to fight the current, even though it was only chest deep, they're still being pulled. So I think the intensity, your adrenaline, there's so much that ties into being an athlete in your recovery. And even sometimes just laying here, decompressing hands on you, emotionally kind of yep. brings you down, you know, a bit into, into your center, yep. if you will. And then you get into the muscles and it's like a workout eraser, you know, you don't wake up stiff or sore. A lot of us have wonky parts that nag. And so, right? And you just gotta like keep prevention, you know? And if you don't do it, you won't know, you know? So, and that when, where there's adhesion, there's impingement, and where there's impingement, there's pain. So, and we all know in this sport, you have to be mobile. <laughs> Very critical, yeah, the flexibility. So why don't we watch you work uh, and certainly tell us what you're doing as you're going. I might ask uh, Kevin to come in and talk a little bit about uh, his training and uh, kind of what how Zach's been prepping and whatnot while Zach's getting uh, some work as well. So is that okay with you, Kevin? Come on in. So you want to tell us about sort of the, the training preparation that, that Zach's been doing? Sure, so training for uh, for CrossFit, what people see typically on Instagram are the, the sexy stuff of shirts off, hanging from bars, doing super <laughs> human tricks but really what happens is three to five hours a day of actually legit training so what we call pieces those pieces can be anywhere from static holds of gymnastic movements to cycling of lighter weights of barbell movements and then sometimes going for PR so a lot of times the stuff that happens between stretching um, yoga um, lighter weights specific movements themselves really being scientific on the movements of the Olympic clip all tied together when you throw intensity into there and then you start putting in um, all the crazy human tricks that you need to do of, of ring muscle ups toe to bar one-legged pistol squats all that stuff all comes back to a foundation that he builds so to be able to get to a, a point where you can finish in the top couple in your event at Wadapalooza, how many years has Zach been, been working? Five, five years in, so far, and he knows that he's probably three years away from where he really wants to go, hopefully yeah. taking a shot at a game's possible entry. Yeah, cool. And so what are the things, are there uh, certain, you know, besides the physical training, uh, what, are the, what are the other things that Zach's paying attention to? I, I'm sure there's nutrition, there's sleep, there are a variety of other 
habit. 100%. I mean, sleep is so important. Nutrition, clean eating, um, the mental game itself is being very analytical of what is to come in front of you, how to pace and understand your body, how to approach the workout. The last workout he just did, you know, a lot of athletes will come out hot and heavy right away realizing that, yeah, I can hold that pace for a little while, think I can push it to the end, but it's that tortoise that has a nice calculated wrist that goes and has a little bit of bit in the tank at the end to push forth and come in the first like you did in the last heat. And tell us about your gym and, and the uh, type of athletes you're normally training. So our gym uh, in Suffield, Connecticut is more of a general population gym. So really CrossFit's underlying theme is health and movement to keep everyone out of the nursing homes, out of the way from the doctors. And then you have that other elite group that wants to just move to the next level, which we have Zach and a few other athletes that want to try to touch, touch that area. Um, so our gym really focuses more, about 225 members of general health and nutrition for people so that they're healthier than they were the day before and hopefully we can keep them in a retirement age of being comfortable and healthy. Yeah, really good when the bones don't creak and uh, all those all those types of things. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And do you have other athletes here at, at the games? Um, we do not here at the games other than um, spectators. We have Coach Stacy who's with us, um, my son and I, Zach's twin brother, he and I competed yesterday in a, a fun, fun family one-hour wildcut yeah. gauntlet, which um, Wadapalooza did a post of, which is really cool. Um, so we got a chance to go out on the big floor and feel what it's like to be the tough guy athletes, and it's not as easy as it looks, let me tell you that. But but you've been the tough guy athlete, right? You well, you competed at a, a, a lower, a, a, much much lower levels, and and um, you know. I was always the top dog with my kids and then they've come and now I'm chasing them when they were chasing me which is awesome that's the way it's supposed to be right and they're far exceeding what I could ever have done so it's really cool to be part of that all absolutely so um uh, what's the next event in line for Zach? What will we do next? So about 5.15, so about two hours from now, um, he has a heavy sandbag carry mm -hmm. for 45 feet. He'll have rope climbs and he'll have um, thrusters at 95 pounds. Yeah. So that'll be mixed in. There's three different rounds of different levels and increments of the rope climbs and, and the thrusters. The, the sandbag will be the same. It'll be 45 feet each time. It's a 150 pound bag. Yeah. So that's a carry in the chest and 45 feet. Try to take the wind out of you and that cardiovascular hold and then test the other elements of a pull, a push, all that with the thruster and a rope climb. My goodness, that sounds fantastic. So, so Jessa, what, what are you doing now? Tell us about the cupping. All right, so I'm applying um, the cupping over Supra and Infraspinatus, the rotator cuff, because my focus is to keep his shoulder girdle mm -hmm. as free and open and flowing as I can. Yep. So you can see the stagnant blood is pulled to the top. So wherever the cups become the most purple, the most adhesive tissue is underneath. So the stagnation is pulled to the top, toxins moved out, new blood comes in, right. and the cups don't lie. So where he has the most congestion, the cups will turn the most, it's just sub -cute capillary breaks in the skin. Right. Have you ever had it? I have not had cups, no. You want to try one? <laughs> Later, maybe. <laughs> okay. But so, so for my focus with Zach is going to be more upper, his upper thoracic for now. And then I'm going to cup a down into his calves probably a little bit for his. And does it vary how long? Does, thrusters. Yeah. Does it, yeah. does it vary how long you leave them on depending on what you see or is? is I use a, it's based off of palpation. So where I can feel there was a lot of adhesion. I know where to cut, and I don't leave them on that long, especially with how quick he reacts. Mm -hmm. Have you seen a change in, as he's uh, gotten stronger and stronger in terms of... I would say Zach's had improvement. If he's felt release. Dad's, a, dad's agreeing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And they keep coming back, so I must be doing something right. <laughs> yeah, it was more, it was more about uh, not necessarily... Oh, uh, I it, know. Yeah, it was yes. more about his development. Oh, terms, no, yeah. I would definitely say that he's experienced improvement in his scores alone today cool. would yield that very cool yeah. well thank you this has been fantastic zach any uh any groans or grunts you want to share no not so far not till we flip on the other side how's it feeling feels good man yeah, cool. nice and relaxed yeah. nice and relaxed you excited for the next event i am i'm ready to kick it off all right all right well let's kick some butt uh i'm gonna let you get to it but uh it's, awesome. it, thanks for allowing us to come in and enjoy this with you thanks for having me all right you bet do you want to come in, chat for a little bit? So, and I'm sorry, your, your name again. I apologize. Kyle. Kyle. Yeah, Kyle. So, tell us about your CrossFit and and what uh, what you've been doing. 
So I started crossfitting with my brother about five years ago. Um, I haven't competed at any level quite as large as he has, but you know, I, I work out at the gym in our hometown, Laneway CrossFit in Suffield, and I, that's about it, really. Cool, and so uh, why did you start CrossFitting? What, what is it about it that you enjoy? Um, I really like the high that I get from it. Um, I've always been into sports, so I've been, I've done running. I like the runner's high. Uh, CrossFit offers that cardio high. Um, yeah, and I really enjoy working out with my brother and my family. It's awesome. Cool. Well, Kyle, I wish you luck. Wish Jack luck. Thank you so much, Jessa, for allowing us to jump in. We really appreciate it. Uh, let's give a wave to the folks at ATP Science, and we'll uh, make sure we tag you all. Kick butt. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thanks, Kyle.